This is the lecture for Module 1 of Unit 6 on Chemical Thermodynamics and Thermochemistry. Much of what you see in this unit will be review because you have learned something of the uh, connection between heat and chemistry or thermochemistry before. We'll connect that knowledge to some thinking about thermodynamics in this unit. Let's review the first law of thermodynamics. The total energy of an isolated system, where you know, no matter or no energy goes in and out, uh, the universe as an example, is constant. Energy can be transformed from one form to another, but cannot be created or destroyed. You may well have heard a statement like this before. Right, so consider something we're thinking about the system. We're, this is chemistry, so you think about a mole of some substance or something like that. Solid, liquid, or gas. All right. If the internal energy of this system changes, and by internal energy of the system I mean energy inside the system, kinetic energy or potential energy of atoms and molecules moving around in the system, for example has nothing to do with external energy, like the kinetic energy of the object moving across the room or something like that. Internal energy, you've probably learned, depends on temperature, goes up with temperature, and you'll see it symbolized as E or U in the readings. Right, so there is energy within a system. And if it changes, it must be because energy entered or departed the system. Okay, we'll consider two fundamental ways to change the energy in this unit. Heat, which you have studied before, and work. All energy changes for purposes of this unit will be categorized into either heat or work. If heat comes into the, the system, it must come from the surroundings or vice versa. So the heat of the system is equal to the heat, negative of the heat of the surroundings. Likewise, if the system does work on the surroundings, that'll be the negative of the work on the system and vice versa. This means that the total change in the energy of the universe, system and surroundings, is equal to zero. However, if you're only interested in the system, which we often are, we can say, well, the change in energy will be Q plus W. And clearly the first law says whatever the energy change is for the system, the surroundings must experience an equal and opposite change. Right, this change system, whatever we're thinking of, is again the sum of heat plus work. Heat you studied in general chemistry one and learned that at constant pressure, heat Q is equal to delta H, known as change in enthalpy. You should review from Jankiv 1, concepts of enthalpy, enthalpy of reaction, and finding enthalpies of reaction from enthalpies of formation. You will have been provided readings to examine to review these topics. This will come up again later in this unit. Assuming we remember what to do about calculating heats from enthalpies of formation and the relationship between delta H and heat, let's go move on to consider the other quantity in the first law of work. If you've had a introductory physics class and work problems in one dimension, you've probably learned that work is equal to the force times the change in distance of the object you're applying the force to. The 3D equivalent of this, 
for working in three-dimensional systems, which chemists do, is that work is equal to a pressure of the system, or on the system, I should say, times a volume change. If pressure is constant, this gives the easy formula, well, easy to write, W equals negative P delta V. The negative sign is important. Work can be positive or negative. Notice that the work is greater than zero if the volume of the system increases. In other words, P delta V is positive, then work is negative. This means the system is doing work on the surroundings. So, in this case, this would lower the energy of the system, and the work is negative. Vice versa, if the volume of the system is shrinking, work will be positive, and the internal energy of the system is increasing. So work can be positive or negative, just as you remember heat can be positive and negative. I.e. Q can be positive or negative depending upon whether a process is endothermic or exothermic. The work change for that process can also be positive or negative. For example, consider a certain change for a system, delta E is negative 1455 5 joules. The system absorbs 812 joules of heat in an endothermic process. What is the work? You should attempt this example problem before continuing with the lecture. Alright, for a certain change, the energy change is negative 1455 5 joules. The system absorbs 812 joules of heat. We would say Q is plus A12. Remember, endothermic processes where heat is absorbed have positive Q. Find the work from W. From delta E is Q plus W. W is delta E minus Q. And we have negative 1455 joules minus 812 equals negative 227 joules. The negative sign for W indicates that the system is doing work on its surroundings. So in this case, the system has absorbed heat and turned it into work. Oh, and its energy decreases in the process as well. Okay, here is an example problem. This example problem introduces uh, well, some of the mathematical issues that may arise in thinking about work. Calculate the work on joules on the air in a bicycle tire pump when the air in the pump is compressed with a piston. Beg your pardon. The piston is pushed down with a pressure of two atmospheres, and the pump is a cylindrical tube 45 centimeters long and 2.75 centimeters in diameter. Report your answer in joules. All right, the trickiest part of this problem is actually the joules part. First, try to get an answer when pressure units of atmosphere and volume units of liters before continuing with the presentation. All right, here we have a solution. Work for this gas and work done on the gas in the pump is negative P delta V. Note we know work will be done on the gas as the volume is going down. Delta V will be negative and the work will be positive. All right, so we expect, well, in the absence of heat, this will increase the energy of the gas. Negative delta V is the pump volume change, or equal to the pump volume. In this case, the pump is 45 centimeters long and 2.75 centimeters in diameter. All right, the radius of the cylinder is 2.75 centimeters over 2, or 1.38. The volume will be equal to the area of the pump's circular cross-section times the length of the pump. 
perpendicular cross section is pi times the square of the radius, or 5.98 centimeters squared. Notice units of 1.38 centimeters get squared in this case. Pi has no units. We multiply 5.98 centimeters squared times 45 centimeters, and we have a volume of 269 centimeters cubed for the pump. Delta V is negative 269 centimeters cubed. All right. If you recall that one centimeters cubed is a milliliter, the volume is 269 milliliters or 0.269 liters, giving delta V is negative 0.269 liters, and a W is negative P delta V of negative 2 times negative 0.269 or half a liter times an atmosphere. All right. Now we have calculated a work using the W equals negative P delta V formula. What about the joules? Energy is customarily reported and thought about in joules. All right. Last step for this problem, then, is a unit conversion relating two values of R that have appeared in this course. You can convert back and forth, well, you can convert to liters, from liters to atmospheres to joules using this value of R. You have seen in Gen Chem 1 and the gas laws that R is 0.08206 or 0.8821 liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. Previously in this course, Gen Chem 2, you have been presented with a value of R which is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And we saw this in the unit on liquids and solutions, and we saw this appear again in kinetics. The fact that these two quantities are both R implies that 0.08206 liters times atmospheres and 8.314 joules are the same. In other words, since P times delta V is work or energy, this must be an energy unit. And here is a relation to convert from liters times atmospheres to joules. Beg pardon while I make the text of what uh, this unit conversion a bit clearer. Our work is half a liter times atmospheres. We can multiply this by 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin divided by 0.08206 liters atmospheres moles Kelvin and The answer to three significant figures is 50.7 joules. All right, so any time you have work typically involving some change in volume of a gas at a certain pressure in liters times atmospheres, you can use a gas constant to convert from liters times atmospheres to joules. Right. This concludes Module 1, a brief presentation on some ideas about heat and work.